Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in today's episode we're going to talk about building protocols, the communication protocols which enable the buildings that we uh, all live and work in today. I'm joined by Alina Matjuhina who is a product manager for cybersecurity at Siemens Smart Infrastructure. Alina, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting John. It's an absolute That's pleasure. Sorry, to be please. honest, <laughs> I am such a big fan of this podcast because they give me opportunity to stay up to date with the uh, news around smart buildings. Yeah, so thank you so much. <laughs> It's a pleasure, and uh, you know, thank you for for that little plug. I'll I'll give you your twenty euros later. To... <laughs> <laughs> um, now today we're talking about building protocols. So you know, the, those communication protocols which our operational technologies use. Um, let's start at the v very beginning for the audience. What what are we talking about? What what are, are these uh, these communication protocols in buildings? So communication protocols, they determine a way like buildings uh, talk to each other, uh, devices in the building systems uh, talk to each other. And there are a lot of them uh, currently uh, exist. Uh, for example, the most common ones are BACnet, uh, CanX, uh, uh, LoneWorks. Um, you can see such uh, protocols, I would say, in every building installation. But uh, some, uh, there are also more specialized protocols. For example, DALI protocol, it's only used uh, for lightning system. Modbus protocol, which was initially created for industrial um, control systems. Yeah. So there's heaps of different protocols. And as you mentioned, in almost every system uh, and discipline within the building, whether it's uh, lighting, as you mentioned, security, building automation, whatever it might be, they either use some common protocols or they have a protocol which was specifically designed for that function. Exactly. And and these protocols, obviously, with everything communication, uh, and we see in the industry that these systems are starting to share information between each other more and more, they must come with some implications from a cybersecurity perspective. Yes, that's true, John. So most of the building protocols, uh, they are unfortunately lacking of uh, high-level security features built in them. Um, I would say one of the most important reasons to realize that uh, these protocols, they were created in 19th, where functionality, not security, was the main focus. So uh, mm, I would say that uh, that time, during development of these protocols, uh, nobody could even foresee that um, um, technological progress will be so rapid and uh, devices, uh, systems based on the BACnet, CanX, uh, LoneWorks, uh, um, they will form uh, like elements on such a smart uh, complex uh, structures as smart buildings. Right, so, so when they were developed, the focus was on trying to make it easy, trying to be open, mm -hmm. make, uh, make it fast and simple to pass information. Because exactly. at the time, th there wasn't that vision that they would be so integral and mm -hmm. so integrated together. Yeah, that's true. And uh, if uh, to speak about more technical, uh, I would say that uh, uh, before, so we had um, um, like the most uh, common way, a standard uh, for data transmission, it was uh, a copper twisted pair cable. So, and other media, like uh, Ethernet, uh, wireless connection, which we are so used to nowadays, it uh, didn't exist. Uh, uh, maybe uh, it does, it did, uh, but uh, um, it didn't have such a big popularity in 19s. So it wasn't uh, everywhere like it exactly. is today. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, now imagine, John, so these systems, the building system, which were initially isolated, they uh, become exposed to uh, internal IT network, to in, even uh, to internet. Of course, uh, right now we have uh, uh, a lot of cyber risks, uh, risks uh, around these systems, and we really need to have uh, a good uh, uh, solution to protect uh, such buildings. Yeah, and that's probably be my next question because okay, th there's a good reason why they were developed in the way that they mm -hmm. were, uh, especially at the time and with the technology that was available and how it was leveraged at the time. Mm -hmm. Now we've moved on in the world, and as you mentioned, you know, wireless and Ethernet connections, uh, this is this is commonplace for us. Uh, you know, we probably all have four or five devices in our house that are connected <laughs> via systems like this. So all of a sudden, you know, 
we have these additional challenges. How do we how do we tackle that today? Because you know, obviously, this the wireless systems and things. This is something we've been used to for maybe the last decade or so, mm -hmm. uh, and and up until now, we've been securing these systems. So how do we go about that as an industry at the moment? Okay, so uh, that's a good question. Um, at first, uh, buildings they uh, didn't have any connection to internet, so physical separation was enough. If uh, attacker wants uh, to attack the system, uh, um, they would need uh, to have a physical access to facility. But uh, right now, uh, we have this. Uh, I would say uh, near every device can be installed in uh, IP backbone, and uh, the communication will be happening via internet. Uh, so to secure this uh, type of communication, uh, um, people they are using uh, VPNs, so virtual private networking technologies. What it means, uh, it's uh, for example, uh, there is a router uh, in uh, network topology, and uh, this uh, router will uh, encrypt, uh, uh, take building traffic, encrypt uh, by using uh, common uh, IT methods such as uh, IPsec or TLS. Uh, uh, protocols and send it uh, to another router uh, in the uh, far end uh, of the system. So that router will decrypt the traffic and send it to destination of a building control uh, system. But uh, I would say that uh, this uh, um, can be um, pretty hard to set up, uh, maintain uh, and manage. And it can be pretty costly. Uh, so uh, another way, and uh, I would say it's one of the most important uh, um, ways to secure building systems. It's uh, IT and OT uh, network segregation. Because, um, uh, for example, if an attacker uh, will try to access building network from IT um, uh, infrastructure, yeah. they will not have any opportunity to do this. And uh, vice versa, if, for example, uh, a hacker will uh, uh, be inside of the building network and try to access corporate network, uh, also uh, it will not succeed in this. And uh, uh, I remember uh, in 2018, uh, it was an interesting case, a data breach uh, in, cas in casino. Uh, so a casino data uh, base, uh, database was hacked by using an internet connected thermometer in aquarium. So right. you see that it's uh, it's pretty easy. Yeah, and that's and that's a risk. So for all of those solutions, you talked initially about systems they they weren't connected to the internet, mm -hmm. uh, and now they are. So this this is not really a viable option anymore. Mm -hmm. The VPN you mentioned can be difficult, can be complex, can be costly uh, as a solution. And then that IT OT segregation, so the information technology and the operational technologies, the segregation sometimes mm -hmm. can also be difficult to segregate because maybe on the day that the building is completed, mm -hmm. uh, is, this may be well established, but as we know, every building has changed multiple times every week, every month, uh, and over years, so many different things can be added and, and, and altered within that building. There's always the risk that, as, as the example you gave, someone connects a, a thermostat within a, an aquarium that then kind of breaches this segregation in, in a exactly. manner. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, uh, definitely not future-proof anymore, this IT-OT segregation, because we have uh, the increased number of IoT devices. We have a cloud connection, remote uh, uh, connections. So this uh, breaks already uh, paradigm. Right, so all of these things, these great functionalities that we, mm -hmm. you know, kind of enables the cool stuff that we're allowed to, we're able to do in buildings nowadays, come with that that additional uh, consideration. You know, we have to understand how that impacts some of those traditional ways that we secure exactly. a building. Amazing. Thank you so much, Alina, for joining us. It was a real pleasure. We have plenty of these to go, I would say. So thank you so much for your time. I reckon that we have at least two or three more conversations to get into depth with this. Um, and also thank you to those listening. Uh, please feel like feel free to comment, like, or share this episode. Subscribe to us here on this channel. Uh, and also uh, keep your eyes out for a few more conversations between Alina and myself around cybersecurity in buildings. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>